seen. Don't you dare say that again about me. Because people might start to believe it. Understand, when you've settled on who you are, there is no more concern for what they say about who you are. I understand that you don't know who you are. I understand that you haven't settled on your identity. So when you speak on mine, I understand that your opinion of who I am is just as flawed and flimsy as your opinion of who you are. It comes from the same place. So I don't give it any attention. I definitely don't have a negative emotional reaction to it. And I'm definitely not about to water it to the point that it grows into something that can actually affect me. What you said had no effect of me. My attention on what you said could drive me into the ground. When I was a child, I made the same mistake over and over again, thinking each time it would be different because I had a different imagination. I had a different illusion that I was entertaining each time before I entered the door again. And it was only out of familiarity that I kept going back to the door and I kept convincing myself that each time would be different only because I was so caught up in my head. Understand that when you're not healed, when you have not cultivated a love relationship with yourself, you will always find a prison and you will always find a warden and you never have to go down to the courthouse physically. You never have to get booked in, in Department of Corrections in the natural physical world. But understand, you're always living inside of a box, always confining yourself to someone else's expectations, to someone else's demand on your life, on your time, on your attention. You say you have dreams, goals, ambitions, visions even that you've seen for yourself, that you've carried since you were a child. But your mother and your father or whoever raised you had you busy doing what they thought was best for you. And then you left their house and you connected yourself to somebody else who became that same figure in your life as an adult because you hadn't put away the childish ways that you had developed in your adolescence. It's time that you put that stuff away. It's time to put it down. It's, it's not even fun to play with no more. You look goofy as hell showing up to your job with your little blanket and your little baby uh, teddy bear that you used to need to go to sleep. People making fun of you now because you don't know how to take accountability and you still play the blame game. Understand, you are inside of your head, but every day locked inside of your head, living by the strategies that you see and concoct in your ego that you think are keeping you safe, but that are really just holding your fragile imagination together of who you are pretending to be, who you think you are, and who you want other people to see you as. In reality, people see you. You are presenting yourself as a flip-flop, one who goes up and down, one who is sometimes with me, sometimes tight, and other times separated and seemingly about to fall off. And even though you disappear into the recepts of your head where you dive inside of these dialogues that nobody else can hear, but they can observe by your actions, and you miss parts of the factual reality experience of the physical dream that we're all inside of and sharing, other people are not blanking out, flashing out, and missing your presentation the way you are. And I think it would be helpful for you to know that and to acknowledge that and to receive and realize that to the point that you change the action instantly by the knowledge that this does not benefit you. Everything we do, we do because we think it is what is best for us. It is never best for you to lie to yourself. It is always best for you to tell the truth, not only to yourself, but to other people. Because the last thing you need is one more thing to get you in the practice of being dishonest. You come from dishonesty. You were born in iniquity. The way of a liar, the way of a deceiver, the way of a manipulator, the way of an accuser was passed down to you. Even if you grew up in a religious household, 
If you grew up in a Christian family, you were taught how to judge, point fingers and see errors in others that you do not identify in yourself as you quote scriptures about removing logs out of your eye before you bother specks in other people's eyes because you are blind to the fact that what you're doing contradicts what you say you live by.